There can't be that many cities which have as much to offer as Hanoi does, and at the same time feel as if they're off the beaten track. You can walk around the streets here and not see that many Western visitors. But as low-cost airlines start to fly in, and as Vietnam prepares to launch its first major tourism promotion campaign, all that could be about to change. Walk around the old quarter and you still get glimpses of life the way it's been lived here for centuries. In many ways, the city's much as it's always been. You don't yet see the international clothing, burger and coffee chains that have turned towns around the world into clones of one another. Hanoi's historic centre was originally built around 36 streets, each one given over to a particular trade. Just to the south is Hon Kiem Lake with its island temple and famous Rising Sun Bridge. According to legend, a Vietnamese king drove out the Chinese and then came here to give his sword to a giant golden tortoise, sort of an Asian King Arthur. Vietnam's new tourism campaign is focusing on what it calls these hidden charms, but they're already being discovered. Tourism uh, growing very fast. This year, 13% per year, and we are expected even more uh, than 13% per year in the coming year. Visitor numbers are on the rise. Arrivals from Singapore have almost doubled since Tiger Airlines launched a new low-cost route early last year. And since AirAsia opened its no-frills Bangkok to Hanoi service in October, it too has reported heavy bookings. And it's not just the hotel and hospitality sectors which are likely to benefit. Visitors to Hanoi end up with long shopping lists. We buy uh, painting, lacquer, we buy incense, incense stick. Clothing made by hand, made, made by uh, measurements. Dresses, skirts, tops, um, lots of purses. You can also get cheap shoes. Young Vietnamese designers have opened dozens of fashion shops across Hanoi. Celebrity is just one of them. Upstairs, a team of seamstresses is kept busy turning out new outfits almost daily. This small business alone employs 15 people as tailors, shop staff and managers. And across the city, small workshops like this are working overtime to meet the demand for made-to-measure clothes. Many visitors to Vietnam leave with an entirely new wardrobe. It's that cheap here. Our customer from America, from Australia, and from North America, and Japan, Korea, and many other corners of the world. And about 40% of our turnover goes to them. And I hope more and more tourists coming to Vietnam. Hanoi also has one of the most exciting art scenes in Asia. Many high-end tourists leave having spent thousands of dollars on work by Vietnam's best-known painters and sculptors. It's made many of them modestly wealthy. Self-portraits like these by Dung Suang Hua have more than kept the artist in cigarettes. But Hua, one of Vietnam's most respected painters, says tourism has been something of a two-edged sword. Certainly there's a lot of cheap art around, but that also creates jobs, and why not? After all, for barely more than the price of a poster, you can have a reproduction in oils of some of the world's most famous artworks. Here you go, a genuine Van Gogh, and yes, I think the paint's almost dry. To you, not $40 million, not $20 million. Mr. Hui, how much is the painting? Uh, for this, 42 US. 42 US dollars. If Vincent could see this now, he'd probably chop his other ear off. But the point that Hua makes about artists could equally apply to whole cities or even countries. In selling out to tourism, some lose their identity. And Vietnam's changing fast. Just a few years ago, Hanoi's streets were full of bicycles, not motorbikes. That's the effect of new money. But Vietnam has seen off waves of invaders before and still remained itself. Hopefully the growing horde of tourists won't change that.